Sunshine's here. Under Secretary Sunshine. That's great. Well, we have three of the four. Good morning. Tar Michael was going to open. He's running late, so I'm going to go ahead and open. Well, should I note, uh, All right. Ma Madam Chair, I should note that this is making history. This is the first time, to my knowledge, and maybe Jeff can correct me, that we've had a woman chair the BBG board meeting. How about that? Progress, right? <laughs> so just Thank like you. That, so you're the first. Uh, Sorry, Tara. First? I'm sure in the past there's been women. We should put that in the minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Victor. All right, so do we need an official call to order? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, just read. Just start reading. Okay. <laughs> All right, welcome, everyone. My name is Susan McHugh. This is a meeting of the Broadcasting Board of Governors and is being recorded. The live broadcast will also be available by webcast on the BBG website at www.bbg.gov and has been open to the public attendance. We do not have a quorum and therefore we cannot make formal board decisions. With the absence of a presiding governor and an alternate presiding governor, would the board like to elect a governor to act as chairman pro tem? Well, I assume, um, uh, I would suggest, uh, Tara, maybe you agree that uh, Susan McHugh would be a wonderful chair pro tem for this meeting. I agree. <laughs> you don't have a lot to choose from. I so. agree. She, she hasn't made any mistakes yet. <laughs> All right, do we need a vote on that, Paul, for me to preside so here? Just a, if there's no objection, you can No move objection, forward. we'll move forward. Okay, I would like to call the meeting to order. I'd like to start off by recognizing one of our board colleagues who recently <coughs> left our ranks and one who's about to do so. Michael Linton was appointed to the BBG and sworn in along with the rest of us in the summer of 2010. With the departure of Walter Isaacson, we unanimously elected Michael to be interim presiding governor. He served in this role for more than a year while also serving as a CEO of Sony Entertainment, which is more than a full-time job. Michael's media savvy, deep understanding of international business practices and experience in leading organizational change were of tremendous value to this board as we considered how to adapt to shifting media markets and increasingly tight budgets. Michael also helped us identify and consider ways in which to improve efficiencies at the agency and among broadcasters supported by the BBG. Amid these and many other challenges, we appreciated his collegiality and sense of humor. We wish Michael Linton the very best. And this will be the last meeting that Under Secretary of State for Public Diplomacy and Public Affairs, Tara Sunshine, attends as a member of the BBG board. Tara has shown keen interest in U.S. international media matters from the start. At our invitation, she visited the agency in April of last year within days of her swearing in. And the first television interview that she gave as Under Secretary was to VOA. In between board meetings, she kept closely in touch with issues affecting the BBG, assigning top advisors to keep her apprised and to offer State Department support whenever it was needed. Her advice on matters of foreign policy has been crucial on many occasions, as have her questions and observations to help focus discussions of the board. It's no wonder she brought so much to the table. Before joining the State Department, Tara served as the Executive Vice President of the United States Institute of Peace. Prior to joining USIP, she was a strategic communications advisor to many international organizations, including the International Crisis Group, Internews, CARE, the American Academy of Diplomacy, and the International Women's Media Foundation. Tara served in various capacities at the White House during the Clinton administration, most notably on the National Security Council staff. And before all of that, she was an Emmy Award-winning producer and off-air off reporter for ABC News. With all of this experience to offer, Tara, we hope that you will remain in touch with this board and engaged in U.S. international media matters in the years to come. Uh, thank you for your service. And just on a personal note, it's been great to work with you. I know we've formed a strong friendship that's going to continue forward for um, all good things, international media and beyond. So thank, thank you, Tara. very much. Appreciate the uh, remarks. Madam, and, yeah. Madam Chair, uh, I'd just like to add my... Uh, appreciation and, and echo the remarks that you just made about Secretary Sunshine. You know, during, we're almost at our third anniversary on June 30. Uh, you and I, Governor McHugh, will have served three whole years since we were confirmed on June 30. Uh, time flies when you're having a certain amount of fun. <laughs> um, but 
we've had four representatives during the three years that you and I have served on this board from representing the Secretary of State, uh, starting with former Secretary McHale, and then two interims and now Secretary Sunshine. And without any uh, disrespect to your three prior representatives, let me just say you set the gold standard uh, for the Secretary's representative. And I hope one of these days the real Secretary of State can actually come to a meeting. That will be a first whenever he does come, because uh, for the 15 years we've been in existence, uh, no Secretary of State has actually formally attended a formal meeting, although we did have meetings with former Secretary Clinton. But your participation, your insight, uh, your willingness to face some of the troublesome issues that we had in the la have, have had in the last year or so that you've been in this office uh, have really been outstanding. And while technically you are considered a political appointment, as maybe Governor McHugh and I are as well, uh, I can say as a member of a party different from yours uh, that you've uh, comported yourself in a very non-political, uh, bipartisan way at all times that you and I have been together. And I'd like to thank, even though we haven't agreed on every single issue, we still have agreed on a good relationship. Uh, and I hope, as Governor McHugh said, that it will continue long after we both have left this board and when we pass each other on M Street, we'll stop and speak and say, how are you doing, and uh, catch up uh, with each other. But uh, I just hope whoever your successor may be, not only in the formal sense of who President Obama may nominate, but in the interim replacement between now and the time a nomination occurs and confirmation occurs, that uh, they just that they meet with you and get some schooling on how a good state rep can perform at the BBG board meetings, because uh, you have certainly set a strong standard. And uh, one of the fun things of being on this board, several, most of which I can count on one hand, uh, has been getting to know you. Well, thank you, Governor Ash. I really appreciate the comments and the opportunity to serve and look forward to seeing where our work takes takes the organization and um, look forward to being in touch with all of you. Thank you. Thanks, Tara. Oh, uh, give me a round of applause for Tara. Governor, Governor okay, McHugh, let me, uh, let me just say, since I'm here in Prague, and even though uh, Kevin Close is here with me, um, I've spent a good part of the day yesterday and today just going around the building meeting with people who work here and this the change in morale and in attitude is truly a sea change and while you and Governor Meehan were in Moscow and I'm sure saw the good things a month ago that are now occurring here you can say they're duplicated in Prague and I'll be in Moscow on Friday but I think you and I as the chair and vice chair of Radio Free Europe uh, can take a certain, uh, a great deal of pride and satisfaction in knowing uh, the ship, ship here in Prague has been righted, it has been uh, stabilized, uh, and there is now uh, enthusiasm, uh, even levity, uh, and um, a, a joy in the building to carry on the mission uh, which is the foundation of Radio Free Europe. That might not have been the case a year ago, but it certainly is the case today. And uh, I think I, I've, ha I've had, I have lost count of the number of people who've come up to me and, and, and voiced views that I just expressed. And uh, it certainly gives one a sense of satisfaction. I wanted to pass that on to you as the chair of RFE. And uh, uh, Secretary Sunshine, who participated in uh, setting the ship right, uh, and I see Governor Meehan just arrived, and, uh, Governor let him, and let him know that uh, uh, things are doing much better here in Prague, and um, and I'll stop with that. That is that is great to hear, and um, I'll look forward to talking with you in more detail when when you return. And Governor Meehan and I did take. Um, a really productive and important trip to Moscow um, not too long ago, uh, which I think we'll talk about later. Um, I have more of an opening statement to go through, um, okay. and then we'll open it up. 
Uh, last Friday, millions of Iranians went to vote in their country's presidential election with the possibility of new leadership and potential political changes on the horizon. In recent weeks, thousands have gathered in Turkey calling for the right to freedom of speech and right to assembly, among other issues. As ever, when there is breaking news of deep international interest, our broadcasters were there with objective, up-to-the-minute reports and analysis. We are proud of their work. In the pursuit of credible and objective news coverage, our journalists frequently experience harassment, threats, and other impediments from those who seek to restrict the free flow of information. This board will continue to call attention to such instances and to call for their end. Bashar Amin Fami, Bashar Fami, a correspondent for Al-Hura, is still missing and incommunicado in Syria. It has been 10 months since we have heard from him, and it is devastating for his colleagues and his family. The board demands the immediate release of, Bashar's, of Bashar Fami, as well as other journalists being held in Syria, including Austin Tice and James Foley. I personally ask for anyone with information about Fami's whereabouts or well-being to step forward. Leading up to the Iranian election, authorities have made numerous attempts to get Radio Farda and Voice of America journalists to cease reporting by threatening their families and loved ones. These tactics are manipulative and abhorrent. Furthermore, messages sent to VOA through Facebook indicate that satellite signals experienced inter interference in Tehran and other cities during election coverage. These attempts to deprive citizens of news and information are troubling, to say the least. We have observed threats to freedom of the press across our broadcast regions. Several journalists in Iraq, including Ahura, Iraq anchors, have been threatened in recent weeks. Efforts by the RFERL's Azerbaijani service to expand its regional reporting met with official resistance in May, as reporters in several regions were attacked while covering stories. On May 30th, correspondent Elchin Ismi, I want to pronounce his name right, Ismaili, was physically assaulted by an assistant local governor in the Ismaili district while reporting on flooding in the region. In the region of Goycha, RFERL regional correspondent Turla Mustafayev was summoned to the police department and threatened three days after reporting about an incident that took place between police officers and a driver and his relatives. On May 10th, Azur Ali, the service's regional correspondent in Imishli, was detained by police while covering a protest of farmers. He was charged the next day with disobeying police orders and fined approximately $180. Also in May, RFERL's Azerbaijani language television news program on Turksat was suspended after experiencing interference that appears to be targeted and deliberate. RFERL's Turkmen service correspondent, Rafshan Yazmurhali Adav, was detained without charge and held incommunicado for two weeks by Turkmen authorities, following statements and appeals on Yasma Haladad's behalf by the European Union, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and Reporters Without Borders. He was released on May 22nd. RFERL's Belarus service correspondent, Ali Rustilovic, was officially warned by Belarusian authorities on May 8th about violating law on mass media, who, I, I'll mispronounce it again, um, actually, David, can you, can you um, give me the correct, correct pronunciation of the last name? I don't want to mispronounce it. Who, say that again? Husilovich posted an article that exposed security deficiencies at Minsk subway stations. Any subsequent warning could result in Husilovich, did I get it right? Yep. <laughs> Being stripped of his official accreditation. In addition, Yafez Hashnovov, did I get that one? Did I pronounce that correctly? I think it's close. Hasanovov, Hasanov. An RFRL Azerbaijani service correspondent has been subjected to threats since reporting on a suspicious death in a facility run by the National Security Ministry in 2011. He was threatened while in Istanbul, Turkey on May 9th by five thugs who broke into the apartment where he was staying. The men said that they were from Maxi Chivan and in the business of killing people. On June 11th, Adnan Habitane, a stringer for the Voice of America's Diva Radio in Pakistan, has, has received, received threatening text messages from a man who identifies himself as Ishan Ullah Ehsan, the name of the spokesman for the Taliban in Pakistan. 
Con recently provide, provided, Con regularly provides balanced coverage of attacks that take place in North South Waziristan, considered the most dangerous place for journalists in Pakistan. Citizens deserve free and open access to information. On behalf of the board, I urge officials and local authorities to ensure the safety of all journalists and punish those who misuse authority, threaten, or harm reporters. I understand that some members of the public who have signed up to attend the board meeting would like to speak for up to three minutes. Are there any members of the public here? They have not come. Okay. The next regular board meeting will be held at the Cohen Building in Washington, D.C. on August 14th and 15th, 2013. So this concludes the formal meeting of the BBG. Susan, uh, Madam Chair, yep. before we, I assume we need a motion, don't we, to adjourn to August 14 or 15? Paul? I mean, we, and we can do that. Sure. I, may, I move that we close the meeting. Second. Okay. But, but Second. Governor Meehan has made a motion to close the meeting. Second. I thought we had to adjourn and then that, can we adjourn? I just didn't hear what Mr. Let's Comer said. The motion. Uh, I made a motion to adjourn, and, and uh, Under Secretary Sonnenshine has seconded the motion. To adjourn till August 14th? Yes. Okay. No, I'm in support of that. I just want, I, I can't hear what's Those being said. That's why I'm asking okay. the question. Oh, I, okay. Yeah. All right. So we are officially.